the tall tales of a city well, that's 1,500 miles long. John Tales of the City. That's 1,500 miles long. Coming down out of heaven, room for everyone. The name of that city is New Jerusalem. The name of that city is Jerusalem. Coming down out of heaven, room for everyone. John tells of a city that's 1,500 miles long. John tells of a city that's 1,500 miles long. Room for everyone. There'll be no more dying in New Jerusalem. There'll be no more dying in New Jerusalem. Coming down out of heaven. Room for everyone. City that's fifteen hundred miles long. John tells of a city that's fifteen hundred miles long. Coming down out of heaven, room for everyone. Don't you want to go to that city? That's fifteen hundred miles long. Yeah. Don't you want to go to that city? That's 1,500 miles long. Coming down out of heaven, room for everyone. Don't you want to go to that city? That's 1,500 miles long. Don't you want to go to that city? That's 1,500 miles long. Coming down out of heaven, room for everyone. There'll be no more sickness in New Jerusalem. There'll be no more sickness in New Jerusalem. Coming down out of heaven, room for everyone. Don't you want to go to that city that's 1,500 miles long? Don't you want to go to that city that's 1,500 miles long? Coming down out of heaven, room for everyone. The name of that city in New Jerusalem. The name of that city is New Jerusalem. It's coming down out of heaven, room for everyone. John tells of a city that's 1,500 miles long. John tells of a city that's 1,500 miles long. It's coming down out of heaven, room for everyone. Hallelujah. Lift your hands to heaven. I believe the Lord's speaking to us this morning. I believe He said, Seek me where I may be found. Hallelujah. I believe it's time. Amen. We get our minds set on Jesus. Hallelujah. God, I want to seek you. I want to find you. He that seeks me shall find me. Amen. God, I want to find you in the midst of my storm. I want to find you in the midst of my sickness. God, I want to find you when I seek you, Lord. When my heart is after you. 
It's more than just a lip service, God. It's coming from our hearts. God, we want to seek you. God, we want to find you in our storm, in our battle, in our trials. God, we lift our hands to you. God, we seek you. While you may be found, if there's ever a time, amen, that we need to seek him, it's right now, while he may be found. God, right now, you are sp- you are spending a span of mercy, of grace. And God, it's time that we call upon you during this time. Hallelujah. One day it may be too late to call upon the name of Jesus. But now God is saying, seek me while you may be found. Amen. And you will find me in the midst of your storm, in the midst of your trouble, in the midst of your sickness. Amen. You will find me. Hallelujah. Jesus, we worship you. We magnify you, Lord. God, I pray, Lord, some, God, make a trigger switch in our mind that it's you that we think about. It's not anything else, but God, we think about you. When we wake up in the morning, we're thinking about you. When we're at work, we're thinking about you. At night when we go to bed, we're thinking about you. God, let us fall in love with you all over again. Hallelujah, Jesus. We love you, Lord. God, put it on mind to seek you. Hallelujah. Let us have a heart to seek you. Hallelujah. And God, you will be found. They that seek me will find me when they seek me with all their heart, mind, soul, and strength. God, put that switch on our mind to, to seek you, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, my Jesus. How I love calling your name, oh Jesus, yeah, my Jesus, oh, every day, your name is the same, oh Jesus, yeah, my Jesus, how I love, oh, how I love, oh, hallelujah, calling your name. all alone but when I needed Jesus all I had to do was call I call him in the morning I call him late at night but when I get down on my knees oh Jesus makes it right oh Jesus oh Jesus how I love call him When my troubles surround me And I'm in despair Lord, you told me You'd be right there Seems like all my problems Have just begun But I'm not gonna worry anymore Cause you've already won Oh, Jesus Lord, how I love to call on your name, oh Jesus, you're my Jesus, oh, every day, your name is the same, Stretch your hand this way. Let's believe God for a miracle. Touch Him in Jesus' name. Come here. Tell me. How I love. Oh.
I'm having some problems with my asthma. They're, they're now giving me shots once a month. And, but I've got also a fibromyalgia, and it's been giving me a bunch of problems. And the COVID that's in my lungs, it's, it's never really left. It's still in there. Yeah, they done a CAT scan, and it showed up still in my lungs. Let's rebuke that in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Jack, anyone who wants to come and help us pray? We believe you, God. We believe you. Stretch your hand this way. We believe God. Oh, how I love calling your name, oh, Jesus. Oh, you're my, you're my healer. How I love Oh, they surround me, Lord, you told me you'd be right there. Seems like all my problems, they just begun. My Lord, I'm not going to anymore because you've already won. Oh, Jesus, oh, Jesus, oh, Jesus. Oh, how I love Oh, yes. Calling your name, oh Jesus. You're my Jesus. Oh, every day. Your name is the same. I remember a time when I felt so all alone. When I needed Jesus, all I had to do was call. Oh, I'll call him in the morning. I call him in the night. When I get down on my knees, oh Jesus makes it right. Oh Jesus, oh Jesus, how I love. Oh how I love. Hallelujah. Calling your name. Jesus, oh Jesus, oh every day, your name is the same, I call on Jesus, oh Jesus, how I love, hallelujah, come on son, come on son, come on son, Jesus, I remember a time I felt so all alone But when I needed Jesus All I had to do was call I call him in the morning I call him late at night but when I get down on Hallelujah. my knees, oh, Jesus makes it right. I call on Jesus. Yeah. Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Call on your name, oh, Jesus. He's my Jesus. Oh, every day. Your name is the same. Troubles surround me, and I'm in despair. Lord, you told me you'd be right there. Seems like all my problems have just begun. I won't worry anymore. He's already won. Oh, Jesus. Jesus, how I love oh, Jesus. Jesus. Call it your name, oh Jesus. Oh, my Jesus. Oh, 
every day. Your name is the same. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, I love God. Oh, to call on your name. Oh, Jesus. something uh, a little bit different this morning, a different view of something that uh, we've all heard preached and talked about. <clears throat> I guess uh, I do things a little bit different than other people. Um, I don't know if I, I see things different. Um, I don't know the way just my mind works, I guess, the way God has put it in my mind. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I, I got a little notebook on my phone, and I, uh, if something, if the Lord drops something in my spirit, I'll take it and put it in my notes on my phone, and it may be a few weeks before I even look at it again, God will bring it back to my mind, or I'm going to be going through my notes, and God will remind me what He spoke to me, um, whatever He spoke to me. Uh, so, I, I appreciate electronics, because they can't be a good thing, they can also be an evil thing as well, Amen. So we've got to be careful with them. But they can also be a good thing. So I want to use it for the glory of God, for the kingdom of God. And I was going through my notes the other day, and I came across this when I wrote down. Uh, the only thing I wrote down was, I have a needle. I have the needle. 
And we all know the scripture where it talks about, we actually, in our scripture in Luke yesterday, um, it was part of our scripture in Luke. Uh, uh, and a few weeks ago, I believe we read it in, in Mark. And that's what I want to go to back in the book of Mark chapter 10. We'll start with, with verse 23. We know, know this is during the passage of scripture where the rich young, young ruler came to Jesus and said, what must I do? to inherit eternal life, and we all know the story. And, and, uh, and Jesus told him to obey the commandments. He said, I've done all those from my childhood up. And he said, uh, well, go sell, sell all that you have and give to the poor. And he was saddened by that because he couldn't let go of what he had that, to have eternal life. Now Jesus here in verse 23, <coughs> and Jesus looked around about, and saith unto his disciples, How hardly shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God? 24. And the disciples were astonished at his words. But Jesus answered them again and said unto them, Children, how hard is it for them that trust in riches to enter into the kingdom of God? Verse 25. It is easier for a camel... To go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. It was 26. And they were astonished out of measure, saying among themselves, Who then can be saved? In the last verse 27. And Jesus, looking upon them, saith, It is written, uh, with, with men it is impossible. Everybody say that with me. With men, it is impossible. But with God, for all things, for with all, for with God, all things are possible. Amen. For with men, it is impossible, but not with God. But with God, everybody say with God, all things are possible. As I read these passages of Scripture, and I, I read them again, it's in Matthew and Mark and Luke. In those three books, and I read all three of them again. In verse 23, go back to verse 23 just for a minute. In another version, the Bible puts it this way. With what difficulty those uh, will lose, with those who possess wealth and keep holding it, enter to the kingdom of God. With, di with what difficulty will those who possess wealth and keep holding it, enter to the kingdom of God. And... In, in, in the King James Version and all the other versions you read, at the very end of this, there's an explanation mark. So Jesus was making a point here. Amen? And uh, with this explanation mark, he was saying it's going to be difficult for somebody that has great possessions to enter into the kingdom of God. And, and again, the Amplified Bible is what it was. It said... Um, and keep holding on to it. Or I like to put it this way. Perhaps it's holding on to them. The wealth is. And uh, it's going to be hard for those to know to them of God. I guess in today's language. Because Jesus could have said. Uh, um, uh, those that have wealth. It's hard for them to enter to the kingdom of God. If they trust in their wealth. And not in God. Verse 24, again, the Bible said they were amazed. They were astonished. Verse 24 says, and the disciples were astonished at his words. And then Jesus again repeated it, what he said in verse 23. He said, how hard is it is for the, them that trust in riches to enter into the kingdom of God. Then again, verse 25, it said they were amazed again. Or, or verse 26 maybe it was. One of them says they were astonished. Maybe it was verse 24. Astonished again. They were uh, bewildered or surprised or amazed. Another version, per, 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 they were perplexed. Amen. Perhaps because maybe they thought that the rich people had more favor with God because they could give more money. Perhaps they could give gifts to the synagogue and perhaps they, he could use their money, amen, to do great things with. Perhaps they thought they were had more favor with God. They, they were puzzled. 
Amen. And then he, again, he says, as we emphasize it again, he said, those that have trust in riches, it's going to be hard for them to enter into the kingdom of God. But verse 25, he said, it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. How many of you ever heard that preached before? I've preached it before. Now, this scripture has been preached and recycled and re-preached again and again over the years. And we've all heard it. And uh, I want to look to see what clearly Jesus is talking about here. Uh, take, take us as a teaching class this morning. Maybe not so much a preaching, but a teaching class this morning. I want to really look what Jesus was talking about here. Now, uh, Jesus clearly says it's easier for a camel. And back in those days, camel was one of the largest animals back in those days. Um, back in that. And he said uh, to go through an eye of a needle than for a rich man to go to heaven. Now, for years, it's been preached and taught and, uh, that Jesus was speaking uh, figurative here uh, about, and, and we all have heard it preached before. And they, say, they talked about, and they preached and taught about, it was the actual eye of a needle was a small gate at, in a wall um, of the city. It was called a needle gate. So I began to do some studying about this. And we've all heard the teaching, and, and this is the, I'll briefly cover what they teach, and what I've, heard, what I've even talked about it myself before, and heard other preachers preach about it. Um, but what they say, that it is a small personalized gate in the wall of a city of Jerusalem called a needle gate. And it teaches that the traveler, that if he arrived to the city after the big gate had closed, in order to get into the city, he had to go through this little personal needle gate. And if he had a camel, he had to t unload the camel with everything that he had. And the camel would get down on its knees and crawl through this gate to get into the city. Then he would have to reload the camel back on with all of his goods. <clears throat> and, uh, and it was called what they called through the eye of the needle or the needle gate. Uh, and this is what was preached. And this is what they say Jesus was talking about. The rich man, it's harder for him to go to heaven. Um, because he has to pass through the eye of the needle. Um, but as I begin to study, the Bible says to study to show yourself approved. Not everything we read, not everything we hear is really right. Now I do not believe this is what Jesus was talking about. And I believe, I've taught it before that way, and I believe that is a wrong way of teaching. That it's talking about a gate at a, a called a needle gate in a wall. Um, and, and I so I did some study and I looked up, and again, I like electronics because you can do, look up, I don't have to have a whole library of books in an office. I can go to my phone and look at the library there and do it a lot faster. So I looked up the Greek word, what's called a needle, in the book of Mark and the book of Matthew. And the word neater, needle in, book, in Matthew and Mark, the Greek word goes, says is R-H-A-P-H-I-S, which is translated means to sow, S-E-W. Now in the book of Luke, if you take the word a needle and look up the Greek word in the book of Luke when he talks about it, and remember Luke was a doctor, so he knew what he was, kind of what he was talking about when he talked about here. But that Greek word is called B-E-L-O-N-E, -E, belone, which means dart or a sharp point, a needle, something to sew with. So I believe Luke had used needles before as a doctor, so perhaps he didn't know what a needle was, and he was familiar with it. So we notice here the Greek word, when Jesus said a needle here, in both Matthew, Mark, and in Luke, that Greek word translated has nothing to do with a gate that they called a needle gate that was in a wall. Nothing to do about it at all in the original Greek. But it does talk about a sharp-pointed object 
used to sowing with. So I believe here Jesus was actually talking about a needle that you sow with. I, uh, there's a, 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 I found a, it's called Vines Expertary Dictionary of the New Testament words. I, I looked up and I found it. And under this word needle, this Vines Dictionary of the New Testament word says this. It also indicates that the idea of a small gate is a modern one. And there is no ancient trace of it. I used multiple resources throughout the internet and looked up a lot of different things. And nowhere, and you can't even find it in the Bible, nowhere have I ever found there to be an actual gate called a needle gate in any wall in Jerusalem. Uh, you can look it up if you want to tell me I'm wrong. Go ahead and tell me I'm wrong. If, but after you do your studying... Um, I looked it up, though. There's no historical or archaeological findings to be identified as an eye of a needle gate. They say it simply does not exist. So, some teachers and preachers have claimed this of reference as a small gate in a city, but there's no evidence, and I've come to a conclusion um, that it didn't exist after my studies, after studying on it. Um, and what's surprising that this, what I call misinformation, has been completely accepted in a lot of churches and a lot of our teachings, and it, I, it, I guess it doesn't make any difference because it's not going to get you, say, get you to hell or heaven, amen, but I think it's interesting as I begin to study it, amen, and that's why I say it's important to study the word for yourself. Don't take what somebody else says as from God until you've studied it yourself. Um, that's why I encourage everybody to study the Bible for themselves. I encourage you to read your Bible on a daily basis. But not only read it, study it. Again, the Bible says, study to show yourself approved. Rightly dividing the word of truth. So I want to study Amen. To show myself approved. And when you study, have you ever studied in school? You don't just read it. I, now, when I was in school, I almost read it to the last of my tests, and I'd read it and try to memorize what I read. I'd read it and 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 try to memorize it, and then go take the test. Amen. So, but when you study something, you read it. And not just one time, you read it again. Then you read it someplace else in another book in the Bible. And then you study it. Amen. Perhaps get a, 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 a Greek dictionary and look it up and, and find what the words really mean. So see what God's really speaking about. And uh, the surprising part though, this teaching called the needle gate um, said that the person could enter through the gate. So I believe that teaching is wrong because they taught that a man actually could go through the needle gate, a rich man could, by unloading his camel and go through it. But, if we look at verse, what is it, 25? No, uh, verse 26 maybe? Oh no, yeah, verse 26, look at it. I don't know. Okay, verse 27. Yeah, so what's God say? It is impossible with men. With men it is impossible. So I don't believe he is talking about a gate called needle. Jesus was going through, talking about a rich man, camel going through a needle of an eye. Uh, I, I believe because with Jesus, with this, it is impossible. And that man, if there was a gate, a man actually could go through the gate without God. But God said here, it is impossible for that to happen. So I believe that teaching is wrong. You say, well, what are you saying all that for? I, uh, I believe the biggest problem of the so-called needle gate Amen. It teaches that, that, the animal, that the camel, uh, rich man, could go through the camel of the guy. That is, it opposes what God is teaching. Because God's, God's teaching, you can't get to heaven without me. 
So when we read this again, I, I pray that you see what I'm talking about. Amen. We can either choose to believe the words of Jesus or the words of a man, what he's taught. Amen. Verse 25 again, it's easier for a camel to go through an eye of a needle than to a rich man to, get, to enter into the kingdom of God. I believe that's exactly what he meant. I believe he's talking about a needle that you sew with. Because that is impossible with man. Impossible. So according to this, a rich man is stuck. Amen. And otherwise should, he should remember that he can't do it without Jesus. Verse 23, he implied in verse 24 also again, he said he, uh, and it's, uh, what he meant what he said. And again, he said in verse 26 that a rich man cannot get to heaven, amen, without him. Verse 26 again, you got it up there, Becky? And the Bible said, and they were astonished above measure. First, they were astonished because Jesus said, uh, a rich man it's hard for a rich man to go to heaven. They were astonished. Then Jesus said it again. They were astonished beyond measure. They were surprised. And they looked within themselves. And verse 20, uh, 27, I think it was. Verse 26. Who can't be saved? Right there, verse 26. He says, who can be saved? If the rich man can't be saved, they can't get to heaven, then who can be saved? Verse 27, again, he says, with men. It is impossible, but not with God. With God, all things are possible. They, they were shocked. They were surprised. They were amazed. They were astonished. Amen. It said, who can be saved? And I, uh, and I believe what Jesus is saying here, the rich man himself cannot save himself. And I'll even put this. If you're middle class, lower class, I don't care if you got a lot of money, if you ain't got no money, if you got a little bit of money, you cannot get to heaven Without God. You've got to have God to get to heaven. Some preachers may preach Jesus is not the only way. Amen. But I'm here to tell you this morning that Jesus is the only way. He is the door. There is no other gate. There is no other door. Jesus is that door to get to heaven. If we believe the teaching, amen, of a needle gate, then I mean anybody can go to heaven, amen, through any gate. But Jesus is the only door that we can go through to enter into the kingdom of heaven. You cannot live right and think you're going to heaven. This rich one, your learner, God told him, he said, do the commandments. He said, I've done all these from my childhood up. So he thought he was from his heart. He thought he was living right and doing right and thought he could get to heaven because of his good deeds. But you can't get to heaven because of good deeds. You can dress right, you can talk right, you can act right, amen, you can eat right or whatever you want, and you don't go commit adultery, don't steal, don't kill, amen, and all these other things, but if you don't go through the door called Jesus, you'll still miss heaven. There's only one way to heaven. Amen, and that's through Jesus. Jesus said, I am the door of the sheepfold. If any man go any other way, he's the same as a thief and a robber. Amen. So we got to depend on God. I want to point this out too. I don't believe Jesus is against rich people. because, And I don't believe He rejects rich people because they're rich. We don't know Abraham... Job, David, King Solomon, they were all very wealthy men in the Bible. But you know what the difference was? They didn't rely on their riches. They relied on their God, amen, and not their riches. Some people maybe really just serve God with lip service. Like the rich young ruler said, God, I did this, and I, I haven't done this, and I haven't done that. I, I've done all things that was right. And it kept the commandments from my childhood up. But that was not good enough. Amen. I believe a lot of rich people rely on their wealth instead of relying on God. Matter of fact, I've seen it. I know you have two people that have a lot of money. They're never happy with what they've got. They always want more. And more and more. What can I do to get more? 
My simple mind, I think if I have that much money, you ain't going to do nothing. Amen. Sit back and relax. But no, they want more. They want more and more. Amen. So it's hard for them to trust God for everything because they think they have everything. Amen. It's harder for them to admit that without God, they are nothing. Because without God, we are nothing. Amen. God is our everything. The rich young ruler, ruler was pursuing God, amen, because of his good deeds that he'd done. He thought he was good enough, but that wasn't good enough for God. Amen. All, anything good you can do in your flesh is not good enough for God. Amen. You've got to turn it all over to Jesus. And that's what the rich man couldn't do, turn it all over to Jesus. I want to turn it all over to Jesus. Uh, uh, the, the rich man depended on his riches instead of depending on God. Amen. A lot of rich people don't become Christians because they can't, their, their riches are holding on to them instead of them holding on to their riches. Amen. So in this situation, and I, I, I was looking, Paul began to uh, preach or tell Timothy, who in, in the book of 1 Timothy, you can go to it, I believe it's 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 17. He began to teach him and tell him how to preach to those that are wealthy. Amen. And I believe uh, as he began to tell him, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 17, says, Charge them that are rich in the world, that they be not high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches, but in a living God. And I believe that's the point. Don't trust in your riches. Don't trust in what you can do, but trust in a living God, who giveth us rich, richly all things to enjoy, that they do good, that they uh, be rich in good works, ready to distribute, willing to communicate, laying up treasures for themselves a good foundation, Against the time to come that they may lay hold of eternal life. And I believe if, if God told Paul to preach to wealthy people back in those days that way, I believe it's good for us today. Amen. Don't trust in your riches. Trust in a living God. Amen. Lay up for yourself treasures. Amen. For that time to come that they may hold on to eternal life. You can't hold on to You can't buy God. You can't buy your way into heaven. You can't live good enough to get your way into heaven. Amen. It is impossible if you're rich or not to get to heaven without God. Amen. One person wrote here that I found that I wrote it down. I write this. He said this. There is no archaeological evidence that there ever has been a gate in Jerusalem called the Eye of the Needle. He said, it's just not there. He said, my hobby is a, a biblical archaeology. I have many books on this subject. And also been to Jerusalem around all the walls of the city. And there's no such gate. So there's no other way to heaven. Except through Jesus. You cannot get to heaven. Except going through Jesus. It boils down to this. Amen. You can't buy your way into heaven. You can't live your right your way into heaven. Amen. You cannot make it to heaven without Jesus. Jesus is the only reason we should live. Jesus is the only reason we should uh, 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 do what we do. Amen. Uh, some of these people that have studied, a lot of people got mad at them because they were uh, telling them, teaching them something that they went against what they've been taught. Sometimes it's harder to unteach somebody, amen, than it is to teach them something new, amen. But it boils down to this, amen. I cannot get to heaven except through Jesus. And I believe Jesus, exactly what he was talking about is exactly what he said. A man cannot get to heaven. It's easier for a camel to go through an eye of an actual needle than it is for a rich man to go to heaven. Because he cannot buy his way to heaven. You've got to go through Jesus, the main gate. Amen. You've got to go through Jesus.